Hey guys, today we've got something a little bit different. This is our old, old server and it's been doing well for us over the years. This is actually the one we came to Singapore with from UK and in transport it got a little bit battered. But that's just the case itself, the server is working. We've got a handful of drives in there, I think we've got 10 drives in here. But it is time for an upgrade. We're having a few issues with this server. First of all, there are some issues with temperatures. We've recently upgraded to a more enterprise level hard drives, which are louder and also produce a lot more heat, but they do have better endurance, which is what we want. The second issue that we have is this system is only using a 550 watt power supply, which is a little bit flaky and some of the drives from time to time go offline. It, to be honest, it doesn't help the fact that I have some splitters for the power, so it's probably 50% my fault. Even though this is our backup server, it is still very important to have this resolved because if our main server dies, well, we're not gonna have much fun, are we? On top of that, if we're doing the upgrade, I thought, why not increase the amount of drives we can put in there for the future? As part of the upgrade, we're gonna go to a much larger case. We'll go with the Fractal Meshify 2 XL, which is just on the side here. And just actually, give me a second. Let me just lift it up here, it's quite big. It's this big. So let me put this to your side just for now and uh, we can talk through some other components. I am not even faking it. It is actually really heavy. Considering it's a bigger case, now it can fit a lot more expansion in it. So I thought to upgrade some other things at the same time. So I have a bin of components right here. Uh, forgive me, uh, these are all secondhand enterprise equipment. So. They may not necessarily look the fanciest, but they're pretty cool. So let's start off with the motherboard, RAM, and CPU. Right here, we have a Z420, nice, uh, HP workstation motherboard with plenty of expansion, and it runs on an X99 platform. So we have an Intel E5-2680, which is an eight core, 16 thread, uh, CPU from 2012. Um, I believe it has 2.7, 2.7 gigahertz base and 3.5 gigahertz boost clock. Um, it's a 130 watt TDP chip, so it'll need some good cooling. Um, we also got uh, 48 gigabytes of GDDR3 RAM, um, which is relevant to this particular generation. And um, that's really it for the board. Uh, the most important part here is the fact that we can slot quite a bit of RAM, which is always good for free NAS, and also a bunch of expansion, which is lovely. We're actually going to upgrade this server a bit further. So we're not going to go just free NAS, we're actually going to virtualize it. So um, on our primary server, we already have Proxmox, and this is what these two drives are. These are just 120 gig drives, which are going to host the Proxmox uh, hypervisor. Then for the virtual machine, we're gonna use this Sabrent two terabyte PCI Gen 3 NVMe drive. Uh, this board doesn't support NVMe, so we're gonna use a little AliExpress adapter just to kind of plug it all in. Since this is gonna be a server and it's gonna be running 24 seven, we're just gonna put in a little heatsink for the SSD just to keep it nice and cool. In terms of storage, the new case supports up to 18 drives and I could go ahead and install three of these HBAs which split into four drives on each one of these ports and that would cover us on that. But HBA is actually kind of pricey. So what you can do, as long as you don't worry about the top of the line performance, you can actually put in one HBA and a SAS expander. In this case, I can control up to 24 drives just from these two cards. And um, th this expander is about half the price of the HBA. So between these two, it's uh, actually a pretty good deal. We're also gonna have a dual 10 gigabit NIC. So one of these is gonna be dedicated specifically for the free NAS, and the other one will be shared by the main VM hypervisor. And last but not least, we're gonna be putting an NVIDIA Quadro card for MB transcoding, uh, which would be a nice addition thanks to this old Rig. So with this in mind, let's get building. Let me just put all of this away and we need to prep the case itself as it has some uh, funky setup features as far as I understand. Now that we have the case out of the box, it is clear that it's a huge case. 
by default, it's more designed to do in like an air or actually more of a custom water cooling build in it with plenty of space. But we're going to need to convert it into a more storage server kind of setup. And it's actually designed to do that. What we'll do is we'll take this back panel, move it to the front, and then hard drive caddy is going to fit in between. So let's just get on with that. We also have the actual bracket that goes on top so we can actually mount the water cooling onto this and just slot it all inside rather than having to work in the cramped space. Just a nice little touch. One of the things I really like about this case is that you can actually fit 140 mil fans in here, uh, which will be blowing directly onto the hard drives. As I mentioned earlier, old case, hard drives are getting hot. That's why we actually have it open, which just provides a bit more way of getting the heat out which is not great, you can see the amount of um, dust that's accumulating in there. I have to walk around the case to reach the back panel. That's how big it is. It's ridiculous. Even in its stock configuration, there is still a bunch of places to place hard drives, or in this case, uh, SSDs. So you have these two uh, multi-purpose brackets here, and another two SSD mounts right here. You've got a bunch of cable management. These are actually punch-out holes. You can actually push them out and get extra holes if you're using a larger motherboard. And uh, a little bracket to hide cables further. It's interesting to take apart so many different parts. Another cool feature on this particular case is actually this fan hub. You've got three PWM fans and a bunch of DC fans. And you can power this using the SATA connection. So we've now moved the back panel up to the front. And what that does is allows us to mount these drive caddies here and they connect back panel at, and the front at the same time before making nice sleds here. So what we'll do is now just join them up and add it all in and that will actually make the whole thing a lot more rigid as well because right now it kind of moves about a bit. With all of them in, it'll be nice and solid. With a little bit of effort, we've now mounted all the drives. Well, actually not all of them. We have two more drives just here, which I plan to mount at the top section on the other side. But for that, we'll first need to make sure to add the top section back in and also put in the cooler. For power supply, we have Fractal Ion 2 Platinum 760 watts. It has plenty of power for all the drives and all the expansions that I'm going to put in it. But the more important part is it's 80 plus platinum, which means that it has the best efficiency that I can find as far as the consumer power supplies go. And that's incredibly important for a server which is gonna run 24 seven. If it's a gaming PC that you use for one or two hours, it doesn't really matter that much. The difference in cost is gonna be, you know, a few dollars a year maybe. When you talk about server which runs 24 seven, efficiency does matter because this could be anywhere up to five or six dollars a year, maybe even ten dollars a year, depending on how, how bad your power supply is. So make sure to get the best or the most efficient power supply you can find for your requirements. With a bit of fiddling, I've got the SSD mounted with a little cooler on it. And then it just goes straight in. Oh, probably should mount it the right way. Network card. We also have this little expander, which actually has no brains on it whatsoever. Um, it just basically passes the information through to the HBA. Finally, the HBA itself. Excuse me for a bit of a mess that we have right here, but we've got the drives in and let's just plug them all in. Starting from top, kind of working down and and we have the connectors from the expander and they come in fours and just start plugging them in. So with a bit of effort, we're now done with the build and it comfortably fits 16 three and a half inch drives, which is actually really impressive. But what's most impressive is the amount of space in this particular case. I was able to slot in all my cards and still have plenty of space to go. In fact, there's so much space that I went with a liquid cooling I've put in a 240 mil liquid AAO 
and that actually does have a negative where I am now left with two drives that did not fit in. These with the multi-purpose brackets could have actually gone at the top of the case where the liquid AO is, but I had the choice of going with a moderate size uh, air cooler or liquid AO. So I went liquid to provide just more uh, circulation for the additional fans, but also just to have more cooling for the 130 watt TDP chip. So I am pretty happy. Um, the next step for me is to set up Proxmox, then import the old FreeNAS uh, into ADM and we're ready to go. If you have any comments or any suggestions of what else we could do with this build or anything you would do different, uh, let us know in the comments below. Other than that, as always, if you want to check out any of the items covered in the video, the links will be in the description below. And we'll see you guys in the next one.